I've built over 70 plus AI agents, and I'm here to tell you that 99% of what you are seeing LinkedIn and YouTube about AI agents is total BS. Now, here's what's happened. Even MIT had a recent report where they stated that 95% of AI projects are failing. And after building, deploying, and advising clients on dozens of those projects, I know exactly why those fail. And today I'm going to save you from becoming part of this statistic. Now, here's the main problem I'm seeing. Everyone tries to build the most complex AI agent systems with dozens of, if not even hundreds of moving parts. Basically, AI agent swarms that do everything for you. But that's a guaranteed way to burn your money on AI agents. Another problem is when I speak to engineers, for example, and other consultants, they are usually optimizing for what's technically possible. But what's technically possible is not what is reliable in a business context. Now, why is that? Here are some core misconceptions. First, it's not that an AI agent is a replacement term for artificial general intelligence. It's not an human-like sentient being that takes information and does it from A to Z. Right? It's middle to middle. You have to think about AI agents of how to do those middle to middle tasks. So basically working for human employees rather than replacing them, at least for now. Because in reality, LLMs still hallucinate. And there was even a recent paper from OpenAI that states why LLMs hallucinate. I mean, they are basically trained to lie to us with confidence. They are not trained to tell us, sorry, I don't know. That goes beyond my knowledge. They don't. They make things with confidence. So if you don't double check what you read, you will notice sometimes just a line and sometimes just full paragraphs that just made up because it lacks the information, which it's not trained to. It's instructed to satisfy us, give us what we want, what we ask it to. And the agents are no different because they are LLM based. And that's the problem of complex systems right now. If one agent in this multi-agent system starts hallucinating and passing wrong or false information to the next agent, it will just have a cascading effect of wrong about wrong being passed and resulting as output that is totally made up. And I mean, imagine having an AI agent deployed in your accounting department, making stuff up or reports and then sending that to the IRS. I mean, good luck dealing with the IRS and explaining why your AI agent, well, faked or hallucinated your annual numbers. I mean, that's no joke, right? And that's the reality check I'm encountering in my day-to-day -day work. As an AI consultant, I see the same pattern over and over again. Basically, my clients wanting the flashiest system that just replaces whole departments of human employees to cut costs. But that's the wrong way of thinking of AI agents or how to implement AI agents in your workflows. What you want with AI agents is not replace humans, it's augment or empower humans. To have agents that do those boring and tedious subtasks, those time-consuming tasks, so your human employees or team members can then focus on what's bringing in the revenue, the high-level thinking, what we humans are capable of, not AI agents. So again, it's not end-to-end, -end, it's middle-to-middle. -middle. Your human has an idea, has a plan, has a strategy, wants something to be done. But instead, the human taking hours to do those tedious and boring tasks, your agents should do those in milliseconds, which increases productivity of your employees. And by the way, also the subjective point of it. Don't just view AI agents or AI adoption as purely objective. Obviously, as a business person, you have to think about the raw numbers. Sure, I get that. But human satisfaction makes a big difference. If your employees are actually happy to come to work because they don't have to do those tedious tasks. I mean, we all know it, right? There are so many tasks. And uh, I don't like to do at work, but I know they are important. They are part of the job. But I would like to focus on higher level thinking and basically do the high value revenue generating tasks, not those tedious tasks. And that's the way I want to share with you how you should think about that. If you want to be smart about agents in 2025, I'm not saying what's going to work in 12 months from now, but what I'm seeing what's working right now and what's bringing in return on investment. So as a rule of thumb, Think of the less moving parts your system has, the better it is. Because again, what's technically possible is different from what's reliably possible and what's reliable, deployable in your business environment. Because when money is on the line, you can't risk an agent making mistakes because you were too ambitious about AI agents when the current technology stack or the large language models or AI models 
don't provide that to us right now. So now you wonder what works. And for that, let me give you three examples that I see as a pattern that is actually work. And note, they are usually not orchestrated AI systems. So one agent delegates tasks to sub agents and those delegates to other tasks, basically creating a nonsensical swarm of AI agent that doesn't work right now. It's sequential system. So you want an agent guard rate, basically like an assembly, one agent, one task, one after another, like an assembly line. Each one does just one task at a time and with clear guidance or guidelines, guardrails, what it is allowed to do and not. You don't say, just figure it out and do it for me. That doesn't work. That will burn your money. So for that, keep it simple and middle to middle, not end to end. And then again, think about what is the most tedious, boring and repetitive task. The problem and issues you can handle reliably right now. And those will bring in the highest return on investment. So think of these as low hanging fruits. Now, what are these? First of all, customer support agents. Obviously they are there to answer 80% of those repetitive requests or questions of your customers and clients that are repetitive and predictable. Basically your FAQs went more than FAQs, but not as far as negotiating and closing deals for you. That's not what you want. That's again, those high level tasks that should be the job of a human. But those repetitive tasks that are just time consuming and an AI agent can handle instantly rather than you have to wait hours or days until you get a response. I mean, from my own experience, when I had to deal with my Wi-Fi provider, I had an issue recently and I, and I contacted the customer support and it took them over 24 hours. So I waited more than a day for something so critical like my internet, right? And that stuck with me. I'm angry with them. But now imagine they had an AI agent, which would handle my issues immediately, which satisfies me as a customer of that company, right? So just would give me a feeling of, oh, if I have an issue, they are there for me. But instead I had to wait more than a day for a response for something so important to me, like having access to the internet, right? So don't just think about those agents again in raw objective numbers, also the subjective matters. So in that sense, your customer satisfaction will just skyrocket. If you let them know that, Hey, if you have a problem, we are there for you. They don't have to know that's an AI agent, just someone, they get a quick response for at least 80% of their requests. And if it's more than that, the AI agent will delegate to a human or notify a human employee to say, Hey, this is important. Please take care of it. I couldn't solve that. That makes a huge difference. It takes 80% of those boring, tedious requests off of your plate and also cost. I mean, that's the cost of a full-time employee having to do those tasks and not being able to deal with the same amount of requests like an AI agent can do because an AI agent can answer in seconds. So ideally you let it wait a couple of minutes, but it's quasi immediate response rather than the human just the time to respond to that particular customer request after a day. So as you can see, boring, tedious, that are repetitive, quickly add up, which cuts costs by not having to pay a full-time employee for the majority of requests or issues your customers face, while at the same time, increasing the subjective metrics of customer satisfaction. So keep that in mind. That is also really important when thinking about AI agent implementations. Now, the second is probably quite obvious, but important content creation, whether it's organic content or it's ad copy. So it's language based, it's generative based. You can create images now that are really great in quality, you can create great copy, obviously with AI agents, as well as video. So that's also getting better with each new release of a new model. Now, what's the benefit of it? You can increase the raw output of content while reducing the time dramatically to create them. If the system or agent is designed and architectured well, that's obviously important. An agent is not just an agent. So you have to, obviously there is some technical aspects that go into it to how to structure and design your agent workflow. So it actually wins, but just as the idea where you should put your time and focus when it comes to AI agents in 2025 and the result, obviously consistent and on brand copy and ad creators, for example, right? Based on a knowledge base. So it's not just an agent by itself having to create content from the top of its mind. It's basically you provide it with a knowledge base. So if you're technical, you understand that it's a retrieval augmented generation application, which is 
just a fancy word for a knowledge base. You can equip this AI agent for content creation. So it knows your offers, your services, and all the business knowledge it should to create compelling copy for your organic or for your advertising. That's a huge win if done right. Now in third, it's an employee co-pilot, basically with a knowledge base. Again, it's a rack or retrieval augmented generation app, which can be a huge difference maker. How you wonder by reducing the time your employees get access to the relevant information they need to do their jobs. Again, it's not end to end system. It's a middle to middle. You do not just have a chatbot, you equip the chatbot or agent in this case with a tool to have access to all your knowledge bases or all your finances. So your employees can work faster. So the, your employees can focus again on the high level, important and high value tasks while this agent can just cut time dramatically in cost. For example, I worked with a law firm recently and we created a co-pilot for their employees or uh, associates where this agent had access to all case files. Instead of going through a stack of files over a full day to extract the relevant information to do their job, the agent could filter out all those files and extract the relevant information and present it to the human employee. So the human employee still made the final decision of doing the regular job, right? But the time they saved was a huge increase in productivity. So it's again on the margins. You increase 20% here, 30% or 50% here with an AI agent. But that's what makes you outcompete your competitors by being better on the margins, not a life-changing AI agent that does everything. That doesn't work. So be smart about it. And when it comes to rack application, there are obviously technical aspects you have to think of. You have to evaluate, you have to use re-rankers, you have to optimize it to be accurate. That can also, if not done properly, it can backfire and be just a waste of money, and costly mistake you or your company could make with building the wrong rack application that just hallucinates, but not with a knowledge base. So keep that also in mind. We even had another client who was an electrical engineering firm here in Germany. We couldn't just embed and retrieve their electrical circuit blueprints. We had to fine tune a model. For that, we used, for example, a visual called Pali model to fine tune them on their electrical circuits blueprints. So the retrieval or knowledge base agent could actually get those complex edge case files or information from the knowledge base. And again, just a time saver, which then increases the productivity of humans. So they don't have to do the boring, tedious tasks of going through the files and checking and double checking. And then, oh yeah, that's the relevant information I need to do my job as a human. No, it took the agent seconds to then present the valuable information humans need to do their job, which again, increases productivity of humans. So it humans that are empowered is what's winning. Why cutting costs by reducing time to do the same thing, right? It's the beauty of AI agents when done right is cutting costs to a certain degree and increasing productivity, which skyrockets productivity and ideally revenue. And that should be the reality check for yourself. It's boring that wins. It's the low hanging fruit that wins in 2025. It's not those fancy complex AI agents that just look amazing in a demo and look great in the boardroom, right? Uh, sh sharing with stakeholders and saying, look what great AI agent we can build. Sure, go ahead if that's that's your reputation. I'm not advising any of my clients to do that. I think boring, unsexy, low-hanging food that modestly get rid of tedious and boring tasks while increasing productivity on the one hand side and on the other hand side, it's again the subjective part of it that no one takes into account. If your employees can work faster and don't have to do those boring, tedious tasks going through hundreds of files and searching for relevant information, just having an AI that provides that in seconds, that makes something with your employees. They will be more energized coming to work, knowing not having to deal with tedious tasks anymore. So you're empowering your employees using AI agents rather than saying you get fired because we now have this hugely complex AI agent that assumingly will replace all of the, those tasks that a human would do. But they don't. Humans are still critical. So humans empowered with AI, so augmented, it's a huge game changer. That's what wins right now. And just so you know, I'm not saying those complex systems won't work in the future. They will. I'm totally bullish on AI, but 
just from my experience, the patterns I'm seeing on in the field, working with clients and deploying real agents, not just presenting fancy AI agent demos on YouTube is what's winning right now in 2025. So being smart about it, understanding what's possible right now. Okay, let's focus on that, not dreaming of what will be possible in the coming months and years. So we don't live in this short-term hype cycle. Long-term, absolutely bullish. Short-term, you should be smart about it and know how to deal with those common issues, current technology or AI models have like hallucination and then the confident aspect of it making things up because they are trained or instructed to do so. And the more complex they are, the more moving parts where something will go wrong and will then cascade into a series of other subtests. So if you are thinking about implementing AI agent and don't want to be part of the 95% statistic of failed AI agent projects, check out my link in the description reach out to me and I will gladly help you execute and work out your AI implementation or AI agent roadmap.